please! Fight. Please. Get out of here. If you've spent time researching crunchy co-op games, chances are you've probably stumbled upon Spirit Island, the currently number 11th ranked game on Board Game Geek. Spirit Island is a co-op brain crunch with asymmetric powers and puzzling programming gameplay to work together to save an island. So now, to ease people in on what Spirit Island is all about, Spirit Island Horizons is here. Yep, this is Diet Spirit Island. Same time length at about one and a half to two hours for one, two, three players. And you got five new spirits in this game. And it's going to be the same core mechanics as Spirit Island. Same island, same gameplay. Yeah, well, let's just get to it. So what exactly is this Spirit Island? Well, it's this island, and the spirits are us, godlike entities on the island who made peace with the locals called the Hans, these shroom-looking guys. All is happy, yay. But then the invaders, oh no, they've come to ruin our way of life, blighting the island with their towns, their cities, repopulating with their white-colored pieces. The island is in danger. Our goal, Kill the white colonists and their towns and cities. What you're doing in practice is helming a unique spirit and playing cards to have the island survive against said invaders, moving them off territory so they don't activate, defending against them so the mushroom looking locals, the Zahan, can fight them, or just doing the damage yourself. If your presence is entirely off the map or there's too much blight, you lose the game. Clear the island of the white pieces, you win the game. Oh, and you can also make the invaders so scared that your winning condition requires you to kill less white pieces. They just get more scared every time you kill one of their buildings, and so when enough fear progresses, you flip over a card that gives a benefit, and that gets your team closer to an easier win condition. Every turn looks like this. You gain some energy, use it to program some cards from your hand, keeping in mind what locations the invaders will activate this turn. Then everyone's red bird, or fast cards go off. You choose to do them in any order, Maybe you'll defend an area to prevent attacks this turn, or set up one of your fellow spirit teammates. Then the invaders will ravage, or attack, in every land on the island of this color card. Oh, okay, that's why defending spaces is good. Then they'll build in every type of land in this slot. Oh, that's why we want to kill baddies or move them before they can build more of themselves. And then there's some more baddies they explore to show up on the island, as you add a new card that spawns more dudes. Then you shift all those cards down, the old Ravage card gets discarded. After all the baddies, us spirits still have our turtle slow cards, and then we trigger those, including doing the big smash damage abilities. Once everyone is done with all their slow abilities, then you discard all the cards you use that round, and then you start the next round of programming with your remaining hand. We forgot to mention the growth thing at the beginning of every round, where your spirits will get a little bit bigger to add presence to the map each turn. Also giving you the option to get other things here, like adding your discard back into your hand, or you get one of these power cards that you can now program with for the rest of the game. As you take discs off your player board, you're also going to unlock more energy income, literal free elements you can just have, and more cards you can program each turn. Anyways, anytime we meet our win condition here of just killing all the white invaders, which remember can't get easier, we win the game. Sounds like fairly straightforward co-op, but Spirit Island actually has an insane amount of depth, once you start factoring in every single player's unique passives on their spirits that they should exploit to gain advantage, while also combining it with their unique hand of cards. With that, you're often looking to push or pull allies or enemies to the right land to prevent baddies from attacking and or to set up one of your big attacks. Or how about every single card has elements on them, so when you play them, they will feel your spirit's unique innate abilities. The gameplay loop is pretty much endlessly replayable and gives new ways to puzzle in every match, as each player's spirit presence unlocks are entirely different, and you're just getting more cards and more elements to play as you progress in general to tackle the invaders that just keep coming. That's pollution. So now that you know what Spirit Island is and its gameplay entails, we can start reviewing Spirit Island Horizons, and there's some component streamlining right away with this board, where it's an actual board with an island with some water outside of it, whereas Base Spirit Island just had these modular pieces to make your own island. Besides aesthetics, the main advantage of this is that it has the numbers for your player count setup exactly printed on it, making starting Spirit Island Horizons just a smidgen faster than before, where in Base Spirit Island there were two separate boards. 
And sure, with Horizons, there's no more small plastic minis for pieces, but the cardboard tokens are still good quality. And the player boards being a single sheet with some type of nice laminate over it feels pretty sturdy. While these components are technically a downgrade from the more expensive original versions, Horizons components are still above average compared to board games overall. The rest of the stuff we're going to praise here is all par for the course for Spirit Island. Incredible art, clear symbols everywhere, fast like a bird, slow like a turtle. And the board colors are super easy to keep track of. You can even see your spirits making peace with the Tahant, or sapping the strength of the Colonist, or rousing my stones. Just the same gorgeous art from Spirit Island. And then since there's new spirits, you got the same lovely art on those sets of four cards. And you got the awesome Spirit Island backs that show each spirit's gist. The backstory, tips, their strengths and weaknesses, it's all here. We're not going to go too into depth about the Spirit Island gameplay pros or how its gameplay meets its theme well. We'll save that for the bigger Spirit Island review when we drop it, um... One day. Uh, maybe we'll drop it one day. But for now, let's get to the... The Spirits! This has always been where the Spirit Island crunchiness really comes together as each spirit gives you a unique starting hand of cards, a really cool name, a passive, unique innate powers to pay elements for. Yes, sir, that's all here. Okay, okay, this might sound a little bit complicated though, so thank goodness the five included here in Spirit Island Horizons are all really easy to learn by Spirit Island standards. Devouring Teeth Lurk Underfoot. His passive is that he always gets plus one damage on attacks, letting him do four damage right off the bat through a ferocious rampage. Give him enough fire, earth, and animal elements, and it's two fear and four damage. Sorry, I mean two fear and five damage. If you prefer smash attack sort of play, this is a great pick. Or, haha, I knew it, the trees have eyes, which is super defensively minded. When these trees spend some elements to use their fast innate ability, they can pull the ally Dahans in. The trees defend that land, so the Dahan there can safely attack the invaders. You can also play Watchful Guarding to give any spirit, including yourself, a defend 8 for just one energy. This is a really nice intro spirit to teach that tons of defending can be turned into offense with the right to haunt positioning, to let them mess up the baddies. Okay, one more. Sunbright Whirlwind, who, when the invaders are stiff, he blows them. Or he blows the Dahan when they're stiff. But okay, really, man, is this guy strong, with getting to push white homies every time he places presence at the beginning of a turn. He's really easy to grasp in just saying, Oh, okay, if I push things out of regions, they won't activate anymore. And then eventually, I can get them all in one area to blast them away. So we already have one spirit teaching you the power of strong attacks, another for defensively minded gameplay, and the third to push guys by blowing them when they're stiff. There's two more spirits, an aggressive and defensive type here. So man, if you want asymmetry while being simple for Spirit Island standards, Horizons has you hard covered. Plus, really cool thing with these five starting spirits is that they all have something included in their starting hand that will blatantly help another spirit. This is a great way to start the cooperation going for new groups. You can do the classic Spirit Island. Hey, do you need to do a smidgen extra damage somewhere? Or, are you attacking this turn? I can get you plus three damage on one attack. Holy heck, that's a lot. That's three white dudes. And what is entirely new for Spirit Island is this little power card recommendation that will just tell you what cards to upgrade with for each spirit. So if you don't know what the heck to upgrade, as that can be a bit complex with drawing four power cards and choosing one, cross-analyzing all their abilities and element payouts with your current hand and spirit's abilities, nah, you can just look up what the game suggests, grab it, and it'll definitely align with your spirit's elements and initial suggested strategies. And man, is there a lot of replayability in this box for 30 bucks. Like, this isn't a big box, and you can play this game for a long time. Remember, it's the same formula as Spirit Island. So there's 15 fear cards that are like small bonuses for your team throughout a game. And you won't see all of these every game, where you only use 10 for a game, and there's no repeats in this deck with 3 tiers for each card. Or how Spirit Island's progression of getting generic power cards on top of your unique spirit adds to so many possibilities of progression. Since Horizons just straight up took the original power cards, no repeats here. When you draw 4 cards and choose 1 to upgrade your spirits, yep, that's a whole new realm of possibility for one of your 5 spirits here. 
Now we get to the cons, the stuff that is not so great with this. So first we have to start with the quick start guide, which isn't horrible, especially considering that Spirit Island traditionally had a long, long 32 page rule book. But this quick start guide definitely could have been a lot better, especially considering that it's being sold exclusively at Target, meaning that it's trying to cater towards more family friendly or non board gamer ish audiences. This currently just tells you exactly what to do for only three players. And it doesn't even show you your player board setup, which is weird. It just spews out a bunch of words, which is not newcomer friendly. Overall, it is just a ton of paragraphs of text without many visuals. Not only is this not that quick because it's clunky, it just isn't that thorough if it's only going to be through a single round. What's really clunky is that if you're a one and two player group, which certainly isn't uncommon for Spirit Island, you have to have someone pilot multiple spirits if you're going step by step through this. Like we compare this to Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, the other streamlined version of a popular board game. Jaws is straight up throwing players into a five scenario long tutorial that supports any player count, complete with streamlined cards, a natural story, and ramping difficulty. You will really understand Gloomhaven basics through this, as you can learn by doing. Horizons has no such thing. Like, sure, its spirits are easier than base spirit islands overall, and it even gives you this recommended upgrade cheat sheet thing, but that doesn't feel like nearly enough for a system that is actually more complicated than Gloomhaven. To round out the learning woes, there's no player aids, which is really weird because Spirit Island expansions already had really good ones, so why not put those in? Plus, the rulebook is just as long as base Spirit Islands, where in separating examples and visuals from the text runs very long at almost 20 pages of pure rules. We got really caught up on what the backside of these pieces mean. It's meant to show that things are damaged, but the rulebook will just tell you to flip things over to mark their damage not even show this damage symbol. Compare this to normal Spirit Island, where there's a full section talking about how to damage pieces. If you're completely new to Spirit Island, we highly recommend that you take this quick start guide and just sit down and go through all the mechanics by yourself to really know how they work before you show it to your group. Let's go back to these cardboard pieces during gameplay though, where smaller spaces on the board can just get cramped. And I mean really cramped. Normal Spirit Island didn't have this problem because pieces were small, but when you lay those explorers down to make them horizontal, and cities are three times the size of normal on the same size the board, you're gonna have problems. The 3x token here for explorers doesn't help too much, as towns, blight, and tahans on average take up the most space anyways. If anything, they should make a generic 3x token. And also, if they're going with this cardboard treatment of plastic pieces, why didn't they just make the board bigger? Okay, so now let's get into some nitpicks. Greater Than Games, the publisher of Spirit Island Horizons, has entered a two-year agreement to sell exclusively through Target. Two years. Two years. That's like four, five, maybe even six. I don't know. It's a lot of time in board game years, okay? Anyways, with this exclusivity, if you're not in the US of A, you can only get Horizons through pre-order with your local game shop come this upcoming winter? Not sure exactly how this works, but a lot of signs are pointing to how, if you're not in the US of A, getting Spirit Island Horizons is going to be a little bit harder or maybe a little bit more expensive. The next nitpick is that how you cannot play Spirit Island with four people now. I know this isn't a big deal at all for some groups, but come on, Horizons with its five spirits and tons of pieces could have easily supported four people if it added another board. And then you know what? What if they put a dedicated single player board on the back of that? Like right now single player just requires you to play with a two player board, so that is already a bit janky in ignoring half the island and ignoring the specific setup instructions. We're just reviewers, so we don't really know how production costs work, but if they could have made this game 35 bucks instead of 30 and just added another one of these boards with a couple extra pieces, that would be very much appreciated by many groups out there. Like, I can already imagine a lot of groups just trying to make this game work for four players by adding one of the modular pieces from Spirit Island regular onto this island. 
Real quick, the insert included was just lazily done cardboard that our friend who owns this game threw out. So we found this footage online. But luckily, Horizons includes plastic bags for everything, so not a huge deal. The rest of the nitpicks pertain to Spirit Island as a whole, because this is basically the same gameplay. So if you want to just go to scoring, just skip ahead below. We would have wished that they had some type of system to help you keep track of elements. Because man, that can get confusing when teammates are playing cards on one another to give them elements, and so you have a bunch of elements that you need to keep track of. Or how the setup and play tips are on the back of each spirit's player board that has your presence on top of it. So if you ever want to see the back mid-game, you need to take out all of your presence tokens and then put them back, or do this balancing maneuver I am all too familiar with doing. So now it's time for your recommender score on Spirit Island Horizons, where we try to critically evaluate the pros and cons of the game, while also with the caveat of whether or not this is even a good idea in the first place. For a comparison, we would say that base Spirit Island would be a 9 out of 10 tentative score. We haven't thoroughly tested that game specifically, and have only played it under the supervision of one of our hardcore Spirit Island friend buddies. So, for Horizons of Spirit Island, this is going to be a... 5 out of 10. It is smack down, smack dab average. <gasps> 5 out of 10? For Spirit Island? That's impossible! Wait, if the gameplay is the same as normal Spirit Island, then why isn't the score just as good? Well, we're evaluating Spirit Island Horizons as its own product. A game specifically trying to streamline Spirit Island and to have it reach more gamers and possibly more non-board gamers than ever before. And it doesn't really do a good job at that. Again, all the Spirit Island awesomeness is here, where aesthetic is fantastic, gameplay is the same balancing of cards and resources to puzzle away the colonists, all while wielding distinct spirits for a thematic saving of an innocent island. But besides making the spirits simpler, Horizon still isn't that easy to start, which is what it's trying to do. There's no new player aids or tip sheets, the quick start guide isn't really a quick start, and that was only for three players. Again, our holy grail for making a whole new tutorial game for an existing game is Jaws of the Lion, which excelled in getting you playing Gloomhaven as fast as possible with a play-as-you-go tutorial, and went beyond in having that tutorial tie into its campaign. The whole point of this is to be beginner-friendly, and at 30 bucks, it does an average time at that. So then, why not just save up more money and buy actual Spirit Island, the, the main Spirit Island? That gives you the same crunchy Yuri mechanics, but just more of it. This is where it gets tricky, because 90 bucks MSRP for base Spirit Island is steep. But when you factor in that it's been around for so long and is always in stock, by our calculations, uh, you can probably find it at around 70 bucks on average right now on Amazon. If you can find Spirit Island for 50 bucks, which it is right now at the time of making this review, then yeah, that just blows Horizons out of the water in value. If you happen to be in some weird situation where buying Spirit Island Horizons would save you 50 to 60 bucks compared to buying base Spirit Island, then yeah, the score for this would raise to a 6 out of 10. There is also a minor gameplay angle that you could pick up Horizons if you're more pressed on time, since the spirits being simpler here keeps analysis paralysis down. Horizons isn't going to be Spirit Island's actual 3 hours for multiple people, but that wasn't too much of an issue for Spirit Island anyways, which had plenty of systems to prevent the gameplay from dragging out. And you probably want to play Spirit Island for the crunchy gameplay anyways, so you're not too concerned about games running a bit longer. A big question is, well, is Spirit Island even a good game to have this Jaws of the Lion tutorial game treatment anyways? Kind of? It's a system that due to how complex it is, was historically tricky to have fans of the game play the game, keeping track of their spirit and side of the island, while also helping out newcomers with their complexity. But that's just the nature of Spirit Island. You would have to change a lot of the core gameplay mechanics to have it be more newcomer friendly. Not changing the core mechanics works well in Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion because its gameplay loop was fairly simple. And component-wise, Spirit Island Original isn't nearly as big compared to Gloomhaven's Behemoth Box. And they didn't even improve quality of life with the components here anyways in Horizons. Or the rulebook, which is just as long as the original Spirit Islands. For those Spirit Island fans out there who just drool over the anything Spirit Island, then yeah, this is 5 new spirits for 30 bucks. Which isn't that bad. And then I guess you just take this, chuck it into your main Spirit Island box, and then disregard the rest of this. 
But then these five spirits are super easy compared to Base Spirit Island's big collection of complex spirits. So would these noob spirits be something you would want to play if you're a veteran? Maybe you get these noob spirits to use to introduce your friends to Spirit Island. But then Base Spirit Island already had easy spirits. Maybe you just wait for an expansion pack to get all these spirits on their own? Spirit Island Horizons just feels lazy and perhaps too insistent on being inexpensive, cutting corners in learning, replay value, and some quality of life to do so. We're not going to fault you for getting this, but if you're at Target looking at Horizons, see if you can't save up more cash for actual Spirit Island. Horizons of Spirit Island is an average 5 out of 10 for me personally. I'd be down to play it with new players to get them into Spear Island, but that's it. Because to me, it's too easy and too simple for my Spear Island preferences. Also, base game Spear Island already has four spears that are considered low complexity, so there's no issue using base game for new players anyways. And then I could still play a more complex spirit while the newbies use the simpler spirits. And in case you couldn't tell, yes, I am a fan of Spear Island. When playing with all the expansions, it's either an 8 or 9 out of 10 for me, depending on which spirit I'm playing. But also, I super enjoy all the expansion nonsense, like random events and the tokens, like beasts or badlands. Spear Island is an easy slam dunk when it comes to my tastes. Way too many options all the time? No quarterbacking? Goofy and bizarre interactions for fun combos? It's got it all. Oh, and an amazing theme, since I feel like a Native American pulling the Uno Reverse card because GET OFF MY LAWN has been co-opted into GET OFF MY ISLAND! Horizons has a lot less of all the good stuff, because if my Spirit Island games don't constantly look like a clusterfuck of mushrooms, tokens, and a British Explorer fiesta that I'm trying to Boston Tea Party via a lizard that shits flaming bubonic plague, then I want no part of it. Okay, maybe I want a little part of it, because goddamn Spirit Island has such good gameplay that even with this super easy version, I'm not having a bad time. Anyways, the cons already cover a good bit of why I'm not a fan personally, because again, there's basically no place for this game, and also it's not even that much better at teaching the game. I basically just see this as an expansion that adds five spirits and three more presence colors to our regular Spirit Island shenanigans, so there's literally no reason why we'd ever play this version. Also, I love the little mushroom and explorer pieces, and it makes me sad not to see them when playing Horizons, which, by the way, we now wastefully have a bunch of random punch-out tokens that won't be used. So yeah, in the future, I only ever see myself playing this if I'm at someone else's house who happens to have Horizons and wants to play, but for all my friends, this will never hit the table. Not because it's too watered down or too streamlined, because reminder, this is literally still just default Spear Island, but because there's no harder difficulties, there's really not much to do here. I seriously question the decision to just, you know, delegate harder difficulty to a tidbit in the rules saying, we'll just buy the base game. Seriously, what is the point of Horizons? If you're a newcomer and like the gameplay, you're gonna have to buy the base game anyway, so why not just start with the base game? And if you didn't like it, you're still gonna have a random box sitting around, but I guess you saved like 20, 30-ish bucks. I don't know, is it really saving money if you're not gonna be able to sell Horizons for a good price since people can already buy it at Target for pretty cheap? You know what? That's the strat. Everyone watching this, wait a bit so that all the people who bought Horizons and didn't like it go and post listings for dirt cheap in order to get rid of it. I wouldn't be surprised if you could find used copies in excellent condition for like 10 to 15 bucks in a month or two on Geek Market. But then you still gotta pay for shipping, so maybe you see if it gets even lower, like 5 bucks? You know what, I'm gonna stop talking now, just back to Ashton. My personal score for Spirit Island Horizons is gonna be a 5 out of 10. I have a average time with it. That's actually pretty good for me, because if you know me, I don't really like co-op games without a story or mystery, and also, I don't really like programming in games. It's a big reason why I rated Gloomhaven a 4 out of 10, even though I like dungeon crawlers, because Gloomhaven is filled with programming. I give Spirit Island gameplay the edge here with a 5 out of 10, because the way it progresses your asymmetric powers is way more engaging for me, where the acceleration of your spirit is fun to behold. This makes the programming more bearable, as you realize that you get to play more cards, and stronger cards that give you more elements to cast godly powers across the island for free, instead of Gloomhaven just programming two cards and then dancing around a dungeon room. I can definitely feel the Magic the Gathering card game comparisons with dumping your hand for huge turns of spending lots of power to blast multiple regions. Plus, it definitely helps that the spirit and card art is super engaging, getting me into the theme a little bit more. Though I am just kind of neutral on the pagan worship, then killing colonists idea. That's the surface level, 
dislikes and enjoyment of Spirit Island, now let's get to the nitty gritty, where I actually found that the road to winning that is handling the bad guys on the island is, wait for it, pretty repetitive whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole. You kill colonists, more colonists spawn. You kill those, more colonists spawn. Colonists build more colonists. You kill those. Colonists always ravage, explore, build. Colonists always ravage, explore, build. Ravage, explore, build. And yeah, I guess you refresh your hand at some point. And look, there's other people here that share my thoughts on this whack-a-mole idea. This is actually what I'm learning about co-op games for me, that they feel at their worst when the enemy is a soulless, empty entity that performs like clockwork. For Spirit Island, the super predictable nature of the bad guys exists to give the asymmetric programming a solid foundation. But remember, I don't like programming that much. <laughs> then, I just don't like how Spirit Island handles co-op. I just don't feel connected to other players when I'm playing this game, because everyone is so engaged on their own spirits, their asymmetry of their spirit, and then also all their pieces, their energy, the progression, the board. Yeah, it is a lot. This is technically the good part about Spirit Island. Yes, I understand. The crunchiness is good. But Spirit Island is very much so help yourself first and then help others. Kind of like how you're instructed to help others on a plane when something goes wrong. It's just not a good intersection of players for me. There will be some crucial turns as you play with each other's adjacencies or play support cards, so it's definitely not solitaire. But because of the crunchiness, I'm mostly feeling like everyone is screwing off to work on themselves. This isn't helped at all how I'm not paying attention to other spirits in multiplayer, because I just can't be bothered keeping track of multiple parts of the island and other people's player boards. In fact, I almost knocked down my Spirit Island Horizon score to a 4 out of 10, but after playing 1 to 2 player, I knocked it back up to a 5, just because there's less downtime, and also, the scope of the gameplay seems a lot more tuned to my preferences in 1 to 2 players for the whack-a-mole, whack-a-colonist gameplay. Plus, this could be because I've played Spirit Island with mostly Horizon abilities, but the gameplay arc also feels so linear and predictable. First, you're losing as the invaders mass up against your weak spirit. Then, your spirit gets stronger, gets some power cards, you remove presence from your player board, and slowly the game tips momentum, and then you're just winning until you outright just win the game. Of course, this could be a general difficulty thing, and Daniel told me that the event deck in an expansion can alleviate this sameness feeling, but that complicates the game, which is not what I'm looking for. And this personal score is for Spirit Island Horizons, not Spirit Island with its bajillion modules and expansions. I found that mid-game is actually the most interesting, as your spirit is riding the wave of improvements and just starting to get major power cards. Then end game just falls flat as you eventually realize that you win by just killing enough things. Do we just win now? Yeah. Win. Wait, we won. Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. It's not very epic. It's not really an interesting story. There's no epiphanies. Nothing is that funny. You just win through some cool brain crunching. So that's all right. So therefore, five out of ten average. So yeah, that's my personal score on Spirit Island Horizons. Don't let my personal enjoyment wear you down from buying either this version of Spirit Island or the bigger actual Spirit Island. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I have no idea when we'll actually get around to publishing the actual Spirit Island review, but hopefully one day, one of our friends is really into it. He wants to play all the time. Anyways, thank you to our patrons over here, over here, over there. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we got more videos coming, of course. There's uh, outtakes and uh, special content on our Patreon. That's pretty much it. Yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, anyways, see you guys later. Bye-bye.